Good afternoon. Good afternoon. This is Seth Semelov from Holt Living's Holt Lawyer Network. And today is an exclusive um, sit down interview with one of our members, Chad Robinson. So, Chad, first of all, before I get into your bio, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Absolutely. My pleasure. Thank you. And how long have you been a member of our Holt Lawyer Network? Actually, a, a very short time. Um, I think less than a year, but um, I'm very excited. Great, perfect. Well, let's get into kind of the bio, um, a little about who you are. Just one sec. Actually, I misplaced um, your bio. I apologize. And where are you today as I'm looking for this? We're in, uh, my main office is in Boca Raton, Florida, and we also have an office in Pensacola, Florida. So Chad Robinson is an AV permanent rated lawyer by Martin Dobble Hubble and was selected to the 2016 and 2017 Florida Rising Stars list by Super Lawyers, an honor reserved for only 2.5% of the top attorneys in Florida. Chad is the founder and leading lawyer for Your Damage Lawyer by Chad Robinson, PLLC, a firm that specializes in personal injury, insurance disputes, and business law. So great bio. Um, before I get into anything, Chad, uh, tell us a little about where you grew up, where'd you go to law school, and kind of what made you want to be a lawyer. Sure. Um, I grew up in South Florida and went to uh, University of Florida, the Florida Gators, as an undergrad. And then I got homesick, so I came back home to uh, Nova Southeastern and um, uh, had a great experience there, really great teachers. And then uh, as soon as I graduated and set up shop, uh, I started working for uh, big firms in Miami and uh, mostly on the defense side. And then I kind of, uh, I, I wanted to make the switch and, and represent the policyholders and the, the plaintiffs and the, the injured parties and things of that nature. And then I switched to a more plaintiff oriented firm opened up my own firm in uh, 2014 and been operating ever since. Is operating your own firm what you expected? Uh, what's the greatest lesson that you've learned uh, since 2014? I think the greatest lesson that I've learned is that it's so much, you can be a great lawyer and a very bad business owner. Um, it's very hard to know both and you have to learn both sides of it. Uh, additionally, the other thing that I thought was very interesting is that I work so much more on this side with my own law firm than I ever did working for insurance companies. Um, and I think a lot of people just think that everyone on the plaintiff side just sits back and relaxes um, and, and has time off and uh, no billables and things like that, but it's just so much work um, maybe I've done that to myself, but for better or for worse, you know, I, I have uh, uh, nonstop work days. But thank That's God that I do. Say. That's funny you say that, Chad, because in our Holt Leader series, besides uh, lawyers, we also interview our top plastic surgeons. And, you know, that's a question I asked them all. I was like, look, you went to school. You're probably one of the top people in your school. I mean, obviously, as you, a lawyer going to college and getting your law degree, um, you know, you're, you're obviously reaching the 1% of 1% in education. But now you're out um, and you start your own practice. How do you go from learning to be the best lawyer to now you have to be the best business owner? Now, it's interesting you brought that up because you have to learn how to negotiate, you know, leases hiring people, you know, it's, 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 it's interesting that you brought that up. Yeah. I worked for a lot of great lawyers, but not a lot of great bosses and there's a difference. And, and then I've seen a lot of great bosses and, and they weren't as, uh, you know, very, they weren't as great. Their skills weren't as great as a lawyer, but you could see where these, these types of partners had their place in these really big law firms. And I'm really lucky that I got the exposure I did early on in my career uh, to these different personalities, th these different skill sets, because I was able to take stuff that I observed that I really liked and really admired and things that I didn't really like and wasn't going to follow and, and kind of uh, use, you know, to use the phrase when we were kids, the spin art, basically just create my own spin art 
of my uh, of my business when I opened it as to what I wanted it to look like, how I wanted it to be, how I wanted it to be as how I wanted to be as a boss, um, and make sure that the people who work with me um, actually enjoy themselves. And what was your biggest challenge throughout the process of opening your firm? I think it was I, I think it was one one do you take the risk? I mean, I, I think that was the the major issue. I was always very technologically savvy. I tried to um, implement as much tech into my business as possible and all the newest tech. You know, AI is becoming more and more prevalent in law firms, and I try to uh, um, change with the times. But I think the I think the biggest issue, the biggest challenge was, not taking the risk and then logistics. Like I did not know who to ask certain things to. Luckily, my father-in-law, who uh, was a personal injury attorney for a very long time, owned his own law firm, was able to kind of direct me in the right direction. Um, but uh, you know, it, it was uh, I was very thankful that I had some some resources at the end of the day. But I, I, taking that gigantic leap of faith on your on yourself, I think, was the biggest issue to overcome and what makes your firm unique i mean obviously you're in you know you go to super lawyers or you know look at lawyers there's hundreds or even thousands of lawyers and law firms what makes your firm unique yeah i think that there's a couple of things one is that i really enjoy what i do and so what that means is i'm entirely um uh, available for my clients. If they need me on the weekend, I speak with them. I, I understand that I'm coming to a client in one of their most desperate times uh, after a traumatic injury for personal injury, or after their home gets destroyed for insurance disputes, or if there's a business dispute or something like that. I'm coming to my client where they're uh, maybe emotionally challenged at that time. And I really try to take a humanistic approach while also guiding them through the process of litigation or whatever it may be. Additionally, as I said before, I really try to implement more of the technology in, in my firm. So there's a lot of automation that I'm putting in on the back end to make my clients uh, experience with my law firm a lot more enjoyable. If they need an update or they wanna speak with someone, are they available? Can we text them? things like that, implementing the way that people communicate today on a normal basis and what is normalized in our society, I want to implement in my firm uh, uh, dramatically. You know, Zoom, uh, for example, we're on Zoom right now. I, I like meeting with clients over Zoom. I will meet with them in person, but a lot of clients just like the ability to schedule a Zoom call with me so that they can see that there's an actual human being. So, uh, we're implementing stuff that other firms are doing, but we're doing it with a humanistic approach, meaning I am available for my clients. If they want my cell phone, they get my cell phone. Um, I'm very altruistic about what I what I do. I, I'm not I'm not so jaded um, as as uh, as you can be in this type of industry. Uh, and, and then you know the the normal things that a lot of other people have. But what sets me apart, I really do believe, is that if you if you hire me, you get me. So obviously, I mean, everyone, you know, when you have an insurance claim, you pretty much get screwed if you don't, you know, the reality. So what are some predatory practices insurance companies do that we should be all aware of? Because, you know, I mean, that's what you do is you help the consumer. It's a really good question. And the, the fact of the matter is, is that insurance companies are always looking for easy ways to delay, defend, and deny, right? Uh, or deny, delay, defend, whatever order you want to put it in. And, and the truth of the matter is, is that what will happen is after an accident, for example, you'll get a call from an insurance company really quick saying, hey, we'll offer you X amount of dollars. All you have to do is sign this release document. And then they try to get <laughs> to, right. They try to get to an injured party before they're able to get any type of legal consultation. Right, they're trying to get that claim out of their way. That happens so many times with these insurance companies that will just offer five grand or or some nominal amount that maybe does not equal the compensation that you are deserving of for the injuries. Same thing with insurance claims on property damage. Those those happen the same way. The insurance companies come out. They try to settle with you before you're able to get any type of professional guidance or help. 
Uh, so right. those are the predatory practices that I would always be aware of as a prospective client. And knowing that you do have the ability to ask someone who knows and is able to guide you through the process and is able to advise you appropriately and find that resource that, that is out there, you know, in South Florida, it can be me or, you know, in Florida, it can be me or, or what have you, but, but ask the questions to someone who is going to be looking out for your best interest, not the insurance company's bottom line. So those are the things that I would really look out for because, again, they are going to come after you right after a car accident, right after a hurricane, right after these things that really put you in a very vulnerable spot. And if you if you see an offer, you may be inclined to take it. But know that there's other people who are going to work in your best interest to get you the maximum amount of compensation that you would be entitled to. And so what, when does it get to the point that someone needs to call you in that process? So let's say, for example, I have friends, they're still fighting, you know, with the insurance companies of their roofs being damaged in, in a hurricane. When in the process is it best as, a, as, the, um, as the consumer to be calling you to get your help and your advice? Well, look, this may seem as a self-serving comment, but it's not. I think as soon as possible. And the reason okay. is not necessarily to sign me up as an attorney, but to ask me the question, because I know if you are asking me the questions, you are getting the right answers, right? So if, yeah. if at the very least, you're not contacting me to, to hire me, I can answer a few questions for you. I can get you on the right path. And then if you want to decide down the road to hire me, but upfront, it's so much better because of the fact that one I know what I'm doing. I can control the flow of the, the claim, whatever that claim may be. Additionally, I speak the same language as the individuals on the other side. So if they're talking, uh, if they're talking about certain aspects of your claim, I'll understand what they're saying and we can discuss it together. And it's not, and, and not only that, but I am not necessarily emotionally invested in the situation. So I'm able to analyze it from a different perspective. If someone's house is destroyed, you're going to be very emotionally charged. You're not going to be able to make many uh, rash decisions. That's just how our, our minds work. Same thing with a car accident. You're not going to be in the frame of mind that will be best, uh, not the best decision-making type of mind. That's why you have professionals like us who have been there, who understand the process, who have seen the other side and know how to get to that side. So I would say, look, as soon as possible, you call someone like me because of the fact that you need to know what you don't know. And what is the most common occurrences you find regarding the insurance claim disputes? Well, you know, there was recently a Washington Post article as it relates to hurricane claims in the state of Florida. Um, hurricane Ian uh, uh, came through the west coast of Florida last year in September and just decimated everything. Um, it, it was, I've lived in Florida basically my entire life. I've never seen a hurricane like this. And I lived through Hurricane Andrew and Hurricane Irma and Francis and Irene and all, all the ones that you can name. Um, I've never seen a hurricane quite like this. And a Washington Post article just came out about one of the insurance companies taking the field adjuster estimates, the, the adjusters who go out on behalf of the insurance companies, create an estimate. They've been taking those estimates and just editing them at the desk level uh, and, and, down, and downgrading the payment by 80%. So, uh, you know, those are the, the real issues that we see with these claims recently is that carriers are underpaying on purpose. Not, not, not just there's a dispute about the payments, they're underpaying on purpose, they're denying because it's easier. And, and again, it's much harder to fight insurance carriers now in the state of Florida than it was 10 years ago or five years ago, perhaps. So, um, and, and that's okay, that's okay that it's hard, um, but, but it, it, it should be able to be done and consumers should be able to challenge these situations. So I, I know it was a roundabout answer to your question, but the most common issue is that it's just it's just underpaid or wrongfully denied. I mean, though and no, that, I think that I think um the fact of the matter is you're giving good information. Um and then the next question is what's a normal timeline for a case in each of your practice areas? So let's say for example, 
um, I, I have a real headache with my insurance company. What, what type of time frame do these cases take? So for personal injury, you're going to look at maybe five to on an average case, five to six months for uh, five to six months for treatment of your injuries. Then after your treatment of your injuries are done, 30 days to collect all the medical records, another 30 days for for the um, uh, for for the demand to take place. So that's about eight months. And then um, and then if you're going to negotiate and you settle, you know, you could settle within 10 to 11 months or shorter or shorter. This is a very average timeline. If it has to go into litigation, then that's when uh, the, the timeline starts getting longer and you could go into several years. But it, it depends on the severity of the injuries, the willingness of the insurance company to try to be reasonable and try to resolve the case amicably between the parties. And then for insurance claims for property damage, uh, you know, the insurance companies now have 60 days uh, in the state of Florida to make a coverage determination. And then after that, that 60 day mark, you can go, you can challenge them and go into litigation. So you could be in a litigated insurance claim and property damage world in Florida four to five months after your claim uh, has started. And then from the date of filing in the state of Florida, you have probably an average of 18 months before you see a jury. However, obviously, as the saying goes, most cases settle way before jury um, is even seen. And um, my next question is, besides um, insurance, you also do personal injury. Yeah. What are some of the biggest misconceptions surrounding personal injury law? Well, I, I think the, the major thing is, is that people don't always know that they can afford an attorney. And, and the fact of the matter is, is that they can. Uh, most personal injury, I, I think all personal injury attorneys actually work on a contingency fee, which means that if you don't recover, we don't get paid. Um, and it makes us on the, the same playing field, the same team, and it, it, it allows us the ability to uh, fight for you um, and, and for you as an injured party to get a qualified and capable attorney on your side rather than someone who may who you may be able to afford. And so tell us a little about your firm. Where do you envision the future of your firm? Like where are you at now and where do you want to be in the future? What I'd really like to be is a completely virtual law firm in the future. I, I don't I think the brick and mortar offices have gone by the uh, have gone by the wayside. Um, I think that uh, more and more times clients don't want to meet you in your office, may not even want to meet you in person. Um, and so uh, for those reasons, you know, I, I think that I'd really like to be virtual. Additionally, you know, by by the courts allowing us to appear virtually through Zoom, it it opens up a world of opportunities for lawyers, especially to be wherever you want to be and litigate and represent your clients and be timely with everything. Um, I know that I was able to take a vacation last year and my clients did not even know I was on vacation because I was able to work at the same time I was able to go on vacation. So I was able to attend hearings and things like that. So I wanna work more and more towards a virtually and automated law firm. Automation will allow for less and less Scrivener errors or anything like that. And I think that it will help me uh, better represent my clients and potential clients. Amazing. Um, when I was reading your bio, um, you're really involved in philanthropy too, um, helping out the community. Um, could you talk about how you got into that and what kind of community engagement means to you? Sure. So the thing that I do that I really love the most is um, my my aunt is a teacher at a private school in Florida, and she teaches seniors. And seniors don't really understand the real difference between being 17 years old and being 18 years old. So what I like to do is I like to go into these classes and I like to teach students what's the difference between 17 and 18. 
I, I like to, I like them to know what they're going to be responsible for as adults under the law. And I like to make sure that, that, that they're going to be okay. And, uh, you know, I try to advocate for no drinking and driving. I try to advocate um, uh, for, uh, for them understanding the differences between being a kid and being an adult, really. Um, and I try to do that several times a year. Uh, additionally, um, you know, there's some charitable organizations that are really near and dear to my heart. Uh, one being Alzheimer's that, uh, research that I, we uh, donate to on a regular basis. But those those two things are, and then some other charitable organizations. But um, you know, look, we, I, I try to do uh, community engagement in my own way because everyone, you know, may you know some people may do food drives or things like that. But I really like getting out there. I like teaching kids and making sure that people know uh, again what they don't know. You know, teach them. I, I like teaching very much. Um, I. I, uh, I like to go around and, you know, I do seminars uh, as well, speaking engagements uh, for, for anyone who needs to know about what's the, you know, the most up-to-date things happening uh, in the law and in the practice areas that I, in which I practice. And then Chad, um, let's say someone's watching this, a young um, student in college, um, what's some advice that you could give to someone that wants to be following your footsteps, you know? Um, know that you, the thing that I learned when I, uh, when I was going to law school is that a law school is a very good opening door, um, uh, tool for, for other, uh, for other types of jobs. Meaning if you graduate from law school, you do not have to be a lawyer. It opens up the world of opportunity. It also gives you a different viewpoint on the world. So I would, I would ask, I would, I would tell this person that, if you go to law school, don't worry, you don't have to be a lawyer, um, but it, it gives you a, a wealth of knowledge about the world around you and a way of analyzing it that you didn't know you could do beforehand. Um, and then the other side of it is, is that um, don't take yourself too seriously because that law school has a way of, of, of brainwashing you into, uh, into taking things much more seriously than you should. And, and also, uh, uh, not allowing you to be, um, not allowing your common sense to take over. And I, I think that you really need to do that. Uh, additionally, one last thing is that uh, you you have to make sure that that you're protecting yourself as well as your clients. Well, Chad, I really appreciate you. Um, for me, I learned because as a business owner, I've actually had a couple of issues with my insurance companies. Um, and you know, the goal is as a consumer, you, you want to work it out with the insurance companies, you, you play by, you know, all the rules and it's almost like, I feel like it's like a dog and pony show. Um, and I think the biggest lesson I learned is, you know, if it's not, if a, if they make you a deal immediately, do not take it. Uh, that's what I learned if they call you up. And, uh, the second part is, is if there is issues, you know, don't wait, call an attorney whether it's Chad or another attorney and, you know, tell your story and make sure but it that it should be Chad. <laughs> oh no, obviously it should be I'm Chad. 100%. Yeah. Chad, um, yes. But yeah, one you... of the things that I, I also wanted to point out is, uh, you know, funny things is that when, uh, just as an aside, um, and sorry to interrupt, but when, you know, I, when I, when I will be introduced to people, they'll say, oh, what do you do for a living? And, and, and I'll say, oh, I'm a lawyer. And they'll say, oh, okay. No one wants to hear necessarily yeah. about the law business. But one of the other things that I do that, that I try to point out so that I do stick out in people's minds is that on the side, if you will, I do sports announcing. So I'm the current voice of the Miami Hurricanes. I used to do the Marlins and, and some other aspects work at ESPN. Oh, very cool. So those are things that I like, you know, that if you're, if you wanted to know about what makes me unique is that I have, uh, I have different uh, things that I do that I think, first of all, you know, of course, sports announcing, I think helps me practice and present in being a lawyer. So uh, something that sets me aside is I'm pretty much easily re uh, uh, memorable. Well, I appreciate that. Um, so when you say this, what, what do you do? Which sports do you do for the Hurricanes? Basketball and football. Oh, wow. 
um, this has been a great year for basketball. Yeah, yeah, it has been. So uh, I'm off to Houston Saturday, and we'll see what happens there. And when Chad says Houston, Chad is talking the Final Four. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Well, no, no. Someone might be on a so that which is big because uh, I'm based in Miami. And then do you do the oh. ladies basketball because you got the two twins, so they're the hottest. Like they're really they got they got a lot of excitement too. They're the two twins. Yeah, they the Cavender sisters. They they added a lot of excitement to the team, and uh, you know, um, it, it's it's just been equally exciting to watch the the men and the women. I've been affiliated with the university for a really long time, and you know, it's a it it's honestly so much fun to do what I do, and I get to watch all the games and and meet the players and find out which players are you know, who, who are just really, really great people and get to know them on a fundamental level too. So it's, it's really exciting and see exactly what I said happened happens. You didn't even ask me about the law anymore, but that's why I well, do no, it. Of course. And yeah. that's what, that's what these, that's what these interviews are all about. And yeah. I really, um, you know, I appreciate you opening up and letting us into your life and into your practice and I appreciate you and what you do, the community, and and you're you're an amazing partner and a great uh, person to promote in the Hope Lawyer Network because you're obviously very knowledgeable, and that's what's most important. So, Chad, I appreciate uh, your day today, and I wish you the best uh, for the remainder of the week. Thanks so much, Seth. You too. And good luck in uh, Houston. Hopefully, we'll get to the finals. <laughs> we'll, we'll definitely see. All right. Thank you, buddy. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you.